Hi, I'm on my way to the play date event. It's so quiet in here. What the heck? I must be early. This is so unlike me. Man, the budget was hit pretty hard this year. I've been coming here for the last six years. I'm not just going to leave. I know this place like the back of my hand. Who put that there? Okay, I'll just put this here and connect this there. Okay, let's see. Nothing will stop this amazing event from happening. Let's play. Welcome everyone to our Playdate program. We are so thrilled to have each one of you joining us virtually tonight. Although we're not physically together like we have been in years past, we're all here tuning in virtually for the same reason, to support St. Louis Children's Hospital. I'm Jen Myers from The Wake Up with Jen and Tim on Y98, and I am honored once again to be your Playdate MC. For the last six years, Playdate has been a night where we adults, sorry kids, have the opportunity to relive some of our favorite childhood memories. It's a night where we can be kids again, all in support of kids who benefit from St. Louis Children's Hospital. Through these events, we've had the opportunity to celebrate a number of themes, from carnival to camping to homecoming. When deciding a theme for this year's event, we thought about all the ways the 2020 has challenged us. Birthday parties became drive-by parade celebrations. Happy hours at our favorite restaurants were replaced by happy hours in our living rooms over Zoom. Our kids were taken out of their classrooms and were taught at home with the help of their parents and their caregivers. A lot of our typical plans and regular schedules have been put on pause, but one thing that can never be stopped through all of this craziness is childhood illness. So we're here tonight to remind ourselves of the importance of slowing down and enjoying each of those little moments in life with our family and friends. Since this year has been about staying home, what could be a more fitting theme than family game night? Can you see this? By now you should have received a package with fun for the whole family, including a St. Louis Children's Hospital Monopoly board game, some tasty treats and adult beverages for mom and dad, and even some goodies for the kids. When planning a virtual event, we came up with a few goals for tonight because we don't want this to just be another Zoom call. We want everyone to learn about awe-inspiring work that's happening day in and day out at St. Louis Children's Hospital. We want everyone to have an amazing experience. We want everyone to know that by joining us tonight, you are changing the lives of patients and their families right here in St. Louis and beyond. That is incredible. So we're going to keep the program short tonight, but powerful. We want you all to enjoy the fun provided for you in your box at home. So pour yourself a drink if you haven't already. Also, throughout this evening, you have the opportunity to donate to St. Louis Children's Hospital through our auction website. It's located at playdate.home.qtego.net. On this site, you can bid on our silent auction items. Those close at 10 tonight. It's also on this site where you can give a donation directly to St. Louis Children's Hospital in lieu of our typical fund -a need that we would have had if we were together in person. After this program, please also take a moment when you log into the site to watch a video from our friend and your favorite auctioneer and mine, Fletcher Lane. I wanted to take a moment to highlight a few of the incredible auction items that you can bid on tonight, including a 20 minute Zoom call with This Is Us star, St. Louis in, and my man, Sterling K. Brown, uh, sorry to my husband, uh, a virtual drink over Zoom with sportscaster Joe Bach, 
can even celebrate a special occasion with the St. Louis Blues, which includes a drive-by parade with Louie, customizable yard signs, and a signed puck and stick. And we have a raffle tonight. We are raffling off a Peloton bike. Tickets are $100, and the winner will be contacted on Monday morning. Don't those all sound amazing? So bid and bid often. For now, there are a few more key players who are excited to uh, be here with you tonight. So let me draw the first card from the Ameren Electric Community Chest. Hold on here, let me see. Oh, I would now like to send it over to Madeline Aikens, one of our Playdate 2020 event chairs. Thanks, Jen. So excited to be part of Playdate Home Edition. In fact, I just landed on the Art Therapy Square. I'm honored to be one of this year's Playdate event chairs. I was asked to join the Friends Board several years ago, and I love serving on the board for so many reasons. It's a privilege working with such an amazing group of people who are dedicated to supporting an invaluable St. Louis resource. I've learned so much about the hospital and the many facets of their tireless work and what they do to support children and our community. Now more than ever, I cannot imagine living in St. Louis without a resource as valuable as St. Louis Children's Hospital. I feel so grateful to have had the opportunity to play a small supporting role. Let me take a moment to thank each of you for choosing to join us tonight, even though we can't be together in person. Tonight, although it's very different than our last six years, it's still an opportunity for you to join in the creative magic of Playdate by playing Children's Hospital themed Monopoly. We hope the evening also inspires you to help in the effort to raise funds for pediatric research that will lead to discoveries, therapies, and cures to ensure more kids have the opportunity to experience celebrations of their own. I would also like to give recognition to the wonderful Playdate committee members and the members from our friends, development, foundation, and hospital boards. Thank you for your unwavering support. Now, who's next? Oh, Nick, my event co-chair this year. I've got to get back to the game. Thanks, Madeline. I just passed go. That'll be $200. Like Madeline, I'm equally excited to be a part of tonight's family game night. I joined the development board in 2016 and cannot say enough about the genuine commitment and incredible talents of the St. Louis Children's Hospital team that has made my experience personally rewarding. It's been more than just a charitable organization for which we raise money. It's been a way to gain a much deeper understanding of how devoted St. Louis Children's Hospital medical professionals and staff are to child health. Whether it's developing groundbreaking healthcare solutions or helping kids and their families navigate through challenging circumstances in a kind and caring way. It's also allowed me to help St. Louis Children's Hospital achieve its objectives in ways that go beyond simply soliciting donations. By working with the development board colleagues and the St. Louis Children's Hospital team, I get to engage members of our community in a way that brings them as much of that warm feeling of association with children's as I've had in my time with the development board. I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to recognize some of the players who joined together to make this event possible. It's astonishing that despite the fact that we cannot be together in person, we still received such overwhelming support from our sponsors. It's obvious they recognize the value of St. Louis Children's Hospital to our community, Chest, and we could not be more thankful for their support. Finally, a thank you to St. Louis Children's Hospital staff and Washington University pediatric partners joining us virtually tonight. Thank you for the work you do. As you may know, each year we feature both a patient and physician and take this opportunity to showcase our incredible kids, groundbreaking research, and inspiring care teams. With that, I am pleased to introduce to you our Playdate 2020 Physician Chair, Dr. David Hunstead. Dr. Hunstead currently serves as the Director of the Division of Pediatric Infectious Diseases at St. Louis Children's Hospital and Washington University School of Medicine. He is also Ryder and Wyatt's physician. We are honored to have him as this year's Playdate Physician Chair. Thank you. Wow, my turn already? I've been in the waiting room trying to roll doubles. I am honored to be this year's Playdate Physician Chair. Playdate raises funds to accelerate pediatric research through the Children's Discovery Institute. The CDI changes the way that collaborative research is conducted and holds an intense commitment to bring about dramatic results. Your support tonight demonstrates your commitment to helping CDI researchers find what may now seem unfindable, 
life-saving treatments for pediatric cancers, lung diseases, heart disorders, and more. One thing we have learned in 2020 is that pediatric illness doesn't take a break during a pandemic. The importance of supporting pediatric research and healthcare has never been so clear. So thank you for recognizing that and for supporting us tonight. Now, I have the unique opportunity to share with you the story of two special patients, Ryder and Wyatt. After being born as healthy 37-week identical twins, the boys started to exhibit signs of illness. They were lethargic, they weren't eating by their second week of life. They were sent by ambulance from their pediatrician's office to Children's and immediately admitted to the cardiac ICU, where eventually both babies were placed on ECMO. Ryder and Wyatt's journey really gets to the heart of why we're all joining together tonight, no matter our physical distance. Despite everything else going on in the world, for tonight we encourage you to embrace the fun and the essence of childhood. The twins were born healthy, um, induced at 37 weeks, which for a pregnancy where the twins share a placenta is um, like the best possible scenario. Um, and they came home like two days later with us. They were small but healthy. She white and rider, everything went perfectly fine. Everything was normal. Uh, two days in the hospital, we were discharged, we came home and everything seemed to be going well. Within the first week, uh, we just noticed a couple things that were a little a little different. Uh, Wyatt and Ryder, they weren't, they weren't really eating great. They weren't, um, they were sleeping a lot, but nothing, nothing we were too concerned about. I remembered like the hospital paperwork is this thing about if your baby doesn't eat two feedings in a row, that that would be a reason to call your doctor. My mother-in-law told Nicole to go ahead and call the pediatrician and see if he wants to see him now, or if he'd rather just see him in the morning when we had an appointment. Their temperature was so low that they couldn't read it on the digital thermometer. Um, he said that um, a low body temperature in an infant could be a sign of infection. He insisted on getting uh, getting an ambulance to take him down to Children's Hospital. I followed the ambulance, Nicole rode in the ambulance. Uh, they were both on oxygen, which was, you know, just another thing that was like, wow, what's going on here? We found out really quickly they were dehydrated um, and then they wanted to take them um, to test their spinal fluid for infection, but their platelets came back so low they couldn't do that. Um, so they were kind of assessing all these things and different people were coming in and there were kind of more and more problems pretty quickly. And they said, no, no, like as more tests came back, like we just need to go straight to the PICU. The intensive care team had judged that their heart and lung function uh, was not gonna be sufficient even with all of the other things that we can do like uh, using a ventilator. It was not gonna be sufficient to uh, provide enough oxygen to their tissues to keep them alive. And so that decision is made by, in this case, the cardiologists and the intensivists uh, at Children's. Ryder was put on ECMO that evening um, because his heart really wasn't functioning correctly, his breathing was labored. Uh, so they basically you know, put him on this life support to take some of the burden off of him. Wyatt went into a cardiac arrest in the middle of the night, um, about 15 minutes, and they were able to shock his heart back into rhythm, but they said at this point, like, we don't want this to happen again. He will need to go on ECMO too. So then they were both on ECMO. It kind of went from, we can't find a temperature to both of your, both of your boys are on, you know, life support in about 24 hours. If I get a child who has, um, who was completely fine and then got really, really sick and I know it's an infection in the heart, these are the children that I expect to get better in a matter of a couple of days, right? But that didn't really happen with, with, those, with the twins. We got the results back that there was an infection in the heart within the first week. And we kept waiting for them to show evidence that there's improvement and there wasn't really improvement. And that got us quite worried. You knew deep down that the longer they're on this, the more complications can arise and it just goes downhill quickly. Then after about a week, we kind of met with our medical team um, 
to talk about like their progress and they said you know kind of their you know they said like we can't predict what will happen but our general experience has been that if babies are going to be strong enough to come on ECMO and their hearts to beat on their own they would have made more progress at this point so they said you know it is possible that they will come off ECMO but not probable. It was also very important for us to say that um, even though we're having this discussion that doesn't mean that we're that we're giving up right we we don't do that. When you have kids that are this sick, you really need these multidisciplinary teams, people who are trained in very specific ways to deal with a certain part of a child's illness. We saw neurology, the cardiology, we saw heart failure, we saw OT, we saw PT, we saw the infectious disease. So they had sent a test for enterovirus, among other tests, and pretty quickly we found out that that was the virus that was in their blood. So the question that was posed to us and that Dr. Orvidal took upon himself was, what therapeutics do we have that are a little bit outside the box for these kids? They're super sick, we're doing everything we can. What else do we have? When we discovered the, this viral infection, um, the infectious disease team uh, helped us reach out to the CDC and actually um, get an, an investigational medicine that hadn't really been used widely in children before. Dr. Said said, you know, I think it would be wise to try. What we're able to do is once we started the therapies is watch how the levels of the virus came down in the blood. In addition to what we were doing in their own body fighting off the infection, we could see that they were clearing the virus. Dr. Said said, you know, basically you want this to be going up and down a little bit more. And so the next day it was just a little bit. And you know, that's, that's all you really need as a parent um, is just that little glimmer of hope. You could see that every single day there was slight evidence that their hearts were starting to recover, which was very encouraging. So we kept going and kept um, discussing it every day. There's more evidence today than the day before, more evidence today than the day before. And then gradually we um, allowed them to do more of the work for themselves, allowed their hearts to do more of the work instead of the machine. Um, and that's when we, um, that's when we're ready to take them off. We do what we call as, as a wean or um, a clamp off the device itself um, to get the heart to do the work. And when we did that, um, we were surprised that things looked really good. So we took one of them off and then we said like, well, one a day is okay. <laughs> let's, let's see when the other one is ready and then take them off too. And um, they both surprised us and they both came off and did, did quite well. From there every day it was just leaps and bounds, you know, just, you know, you know, getting better, the heart rate's improving. Very exciting when we got to bring them home because we just didn't know if we would. In some ways their life is a gift because we didn't know if they would have birthdays and if we would get to see them grow up. It's, it's amazing to look at Wyatt and Ryder right now and, and to know where they were, you know, a week into their life. It's great. It really makes you appreciate the little things, the big things, just every milestone that they hit that, that you know, you didn't, you know, what it could have been or what, you know, how bad it could have, you know, turned out, but it didn't because we're at, you know, I think, honestly, I think we're at the best hospital that we could have been at. We work every day to get to these kind of outcomes. And when we see kids that are so sick, needing ECMO to be supported, and then see them running around, it's really why we get up every morning. This event is customarily about looking back, remembering the fondness of childhood and how each of our patients deserves to live a fulfilling one. But tonight we're looking forward because that's what 2020 has been about one day at a time, looking into the future. For some of our families, that's their reality each day. Patients like Wyatt and Ryder and their family are full of uncertainty and in desperate need of answers. They ache for normalcy and dream of making memories. And with our team, with you, more families can have that chance. So look to the future with us, because now is the time to invest in pediatric research. Back us in our fight to end childhood illnesses. Be a symbol of hope for those families who feel lost. Make an impact on life-threatening diseases that interrupt childhood. Join us in our ongoing journey to fund pediatric research that leads to discovery, to make breakthroughs and find cures, to provide hope and healing. We need you 
in our corner to believe that at St. Louis Children's Hospital, we can defy the impossible. Will you join us? Thank you, Dr. Hunstead and Ryder and Wyatt. That was such an amazing and inspirational story. By the way, Ryder and Wyatt, I hope that your mom and dad are letting you stay up past your bedtime. I hope you all feel as compelled as I do to support Children's Tonight, especially after watching that video. Please take a minute to visit playdate.home.qtago.net. Scroll the auction items. You can place a bid or two or three. And please consider giving a donation in support of the work of the amazing team at St. Louis Children's Hospital. While you are playing your St. Louis Children's Hospital Monopoly game or SLCHopoly game and enjoying your dinner and drinks, please take photos and videos. You can submit them to Caitlin Churchill at caitlin.churchill at bjc.org. We're gonna compile all of those pictures and all of the at-home party videos and share them. Lastly, in true Playdate fashion, you know we always have a surprise after party and this year's no exception, featuring a performance done especially for you by Dr. Chevegas. Don't forget to also download the Playdate Party playlist and you can keep the party going all night. I am talking to you, Ryder and Wyatt. Keep it going all night and enjoy. Thank you and good night. for supporting Children's Hospital. It's time for the virtual play day, 2020. Baby, baby, let's get together. I said, honey, honey, me and you. And do the things, oh, do the things that we like to do.
Children's Children's Hospital virtual play game. We are the one and only world famous Doctor Shabegas, and we are glad to be with you, even though we could be with you in person. Here we go, DC. Hey, hey, sister girl, so sister girl, hey, sister girl, so sister. Give me more of that. Now we don't know our name. Touch us up on the street. She said, I don't hate you. Your love 
Oh, wrong.